The immune system is actually posed to react to potential danger signals. And what I'm going to focus on today is the key T helper cell phenotypes. T helper cells, also known as TH cells, are the cells that help in producing a response to get rid of the danger. Contrary to the CD8 positive cells, the CD4 positive TH cells do not kill directly. They facilitate a particular response. So how is it that a naive T cell differentiates into the three key TH phenotypes known to respond to the different danger signals. So first thing that happens is that for that naive T cell to become either a TH1, a TH2, or a TH17 is that this T cell has to be presented a danger signal, which is an antigen, by a, an antigen-presenting cell. The dendritic cell is usually the most common cell that will present the antigen to the T cell, but many other cells can do so. Uh, the dendritic cell or any other antigen-presenting cell is presenting the epitope that the T cell will recognize through the T cell receptor. But it's not just presenting the antigen. This dendritic cell also is presenting a co-stimulatory factor that will actually tell the T cell that indeed this is a danger signal. And depending on this initial contact with the naive T cell, depending on the antigen, depending on the T cell receptor, and depending on the co-stimulation that is presented, this T cell would actually react to the presence of interleukin-12. So if you have a pad of paper, just write down, there are several key cytokines that I want you to remember. Interleukin-12 is one of them. Interferon gamma is also a key driver for the Th1 differentiation. So in the milieu of the naive T cell, when it's presented with the appropriate antigen and co-stimulatory factors, the interleukin-12 and interferon gamma will actually make this T cell differentiate into a Th1 cell. So what does it mean? This Th1 cell is now going to produce interleukins like interleukin-2, interferon gamma, interleukin-18, and the famous TNF-alpha, which is a very important cytokine mediating inflammatory and immune pathways. Now, the important thing is that the key cell that is the target of the Th1 activation or differentiation will be the macrophage. We all know macrophages are able to engulf and eat the uh, danger signal, you know, the uh, whatever the factor is that that T cell is reacting to. And the Th cell, the Th1, helps the macrophage produce the cleaning of that danger signal. Macrophages will do this by activating other cytokines. Also, the natural killer cells can be helped by this Th1 signaling. And the target organs will be, for instance, synovocytes, fibroblasts, osteoclasts. There's a production of uh, metalloproteinases, proteases, and all of this is usually in the healthy system, dealing with the majority of infections, dealing also with uh, sunburn or any other kind of burns, uh, with cuts and af after surgery, it's a repair mechanism that helps get rid of the danger signal. In disease, the Th1 pathway is associated with very typical inflammatory diseases in a rheumatology. Examples are rheumatoid arthritis, psoriatic arthritis, ankylos and spondylitis. Also, lupus falls into this Th1 phenotype. Uh, and also for the skin, psoriasis is very also characterized by a Th1 phenotype response. 
An important thing is that when you look at one of the key productions of TH1 is interferon gamma. And interferon gamma was also one of the cytokines that differentiates the naive T cell into a TH1. This redundant positive feedback mechanism is needed to be successful in getting rid of danger signals. And we have all suffered, you know, a fall or a cut or a burn where initially the inflammatory response increases and then it slowly goes down and dampens. So this initial uh, retrofitting of the Th1 cells is necessary to not only differentiate into Th1, but also proliferate those Th1s and make them predominant in the response. With a different antigen presentation and co-stimulatory signals, we have production of interleukin-4, another one that I would like you to write down on your pad. Interleukin-4 is the key differentiation factor for the Th2 response. The Th2 response is characterized by a series of cytokines that basically will have the target cell being the eosinophil. Also, the basophils and mast cells, as well as B cells, would actually act on this particular Th2 response. I want to make a, a note that, for instance, interleukin-5 is one of the interleukins that allows the B cell switch all the way from the IgM to either IgA, that is very typical of respiratory and gut responses, and also IgE, which is also very typical of anaphylactic responses. So right away, uh, you can see in my description that Th1 was characterized by a lot of inflammatory response, whereas the Th2 is more of a atopic or allergic response. They will be differentiated to deal with different kinds of danger. So one of them deals with different kinds of pathogens and damage, whereas the other one will react as an allergic response very clearly, a atopic responses in the, on the skin, on the gut, and the respiratory system mainly. In disease, uh, the Th2 response is present in inflammatory bowel disease. As I mentioned, you know, IgA is a very typical uh, response for dealing with pathogens in the gut. Likewise, also for asthma and the respiratory system, and uh, also for atopic dermatitis or allergic reactions. And so Th2 is the typical phenotype that will be driven uh, or driving allergic responses. You see something similar and a pattern that's emerging. One of the key products of a Th2 differentiated cell is IL-4. And IL-4 is a key driver for the Th2 differentiation. So again, we see a pattern for differentiating and proliferating that particular cell. Now, importantly, these phenotypes talk to each other. So interleukin-2 has been shown to inhibit B cells, but TNF-alpha is a factor that actually produces stimulation on B cells. This uh, could potentially be a contradiction, but I will explain a bit more in detail. TNF-alpha does stimulate B cells, while interleukin-2 inhibits the B cell switching or maturation. So what do we see typically in rheumatoid arthritis, for instance, is rheumatoid factor, which is IgM. Even in chronic conditions, you do not see that rheumatoid factor switching all the way to IgE. Uh, it uh, is mainly IgM. In some cases, it could be IgG, but definitely you don't see the complete maturation of isotype switch all the way to IgA or IgE. That is a direct inhibition from the Th1 pathway, which is the predominant pathway in rheumatoid arthritis, for instance. So 
interleukin-2 will inhibit that isotype switching, and TNF-alpha would stimulate B cells. A product of B cell, which also stimulates B cells, is IL-6, and we all know from using IL-6 blocking agents that IL-6 is also an important factor in inflammatory and autoimmune diseases. The third phenotype of the Th cells that I will discuss is the Th17. So again, different antigen presentation, different TCR, T cell receptor, and different co-stimulatory factors will now produce a milieu that is quite interesting. DGF beta here in italics is typically an anti-inflammatory factor. You can write that down on your pad. It's one of the mediators, soluble mediators, that's quite interesting because it is associated with tolerance. But in the presence of TGF beta, some pro inflammatory cytokines like interleukin 1, interleukin 6, interleukin 21, and interleukin 23 have been shown to drive the differentiation of those T, T cells, which are naive, into a TH17 phenotype that's characterized by the production of interleukin 17 interleukin-21, and TNF-alpha. The target cell for this pathway is the neutrophil. The neutrophil is a cell that can actually deal with danger signals such as certain different whole pathogens like candida, uh, other fungi infections, and other bacteria. So, you know, we do have Th1s typically for activation of macrophages, TH2s with mm, predominant uh, activation of eosinophils, and we have the TH17s that are basically predominantly stimulating neutrophils to deal with the different danger signals. In addition, the keratinocytes will uh, respond to IL-17 production and uh, the TH17s help keratinocytes into also dealing with potential danger signals. And there's a crosstalk here with epithelial cells and paneth cells, which also react to the IL-17. So these are cells that were also characteristically targets of the TH2, but in a different way, they also will respond to a TH17 phenotype. Uh, Related phenotype is the TH22, which produces interleukin-22 and is actually also a factor that triggers responses in keratinocytes. The diseases associated with the TH17 and TH22 phenotypes are very uh, typically psoriasis and also inflammatory bowel disease. There's also some TH17 responses seen in rheumatoid arthritis, psoriatic arthritis, and ankylosing spondylitis, but there are predominant response is going to be basically TH1, whereas in psoriasis, it does seem that the TH17 is the predominant pathway that is abnormal. Same as in the cases before interleukin-21, which is a result of a TH17 differentiation, will continue to proliferate the TH17 response. And also there is crosstalk. So we saw that interleukin-2 inhibits the isotype switch of the B cell that is characteristic of a TH2. Well, the same interleukin-2 will directly inhibit differentiation into TH17. Same thing with interleukin-4. In vitro, it has been demonstrated that interleukin-4 also inhibits TH17. Whereas interleukin-17 directly inhibits the TH1 differentiation. It also inhibits NK cell response on TH1 phenotype. 
And it also it is a target that is inhibited directly by interleukin-12, which is one of the cytokines I told you to jot down. So interleukin-12 is a very interesting driver of a differentiation to Th1 that very soon inhibits also the differentiation to Th17. And one of the subunits of the interleukin-12 is shared with interleukin-23. So this is a very interesting biological uh, observation that even though one subunit is shared by two different cytokines, their profile and their actions are actually very different. One of them predominantly committing the cell to responding with a Th1 phenotype and interleukin-23 committing the cell to a Th17 phenotype. But this pathway of uh, inter-talk and communication is telling us that once the cell identifies a type of danger signal that is presented, the cell also commits to having the best possible response committed to that uh, danger. So if we need more of an eosinophilic response, then we commit to a Th2 and we inhibit Th1 and Th17. And the same would happen with all of them. Finally, I want to talk about a different kind of Th differentiation, which is the T regulatory cell that carries the gene FOXP3. This is a very interesting phenotype because it is very typically uh, anti-inflammatory. This phenotype produces interleukin-10. TGF-beta, I told you to write down TGF-beta because it is a tolerance cytokine or mediator together with interleukin-10 and interleukin-35. This is a mechanism by which the T cells now will start producing regulatory cells. And independently of the T helper phenotype presented before, either Th1, Th2, Th17, or even the Th22 will be controlled by the expression of the T regulatory cell that carries a FOXP3 gene. In summary, the three key phenotypes are going to be Th1, basically driven by the IL-12, and interferon gamma, produces a cytokine profile that's very characteristic of Th1. It will induce responses by macrophages, which basically will work on responding to many bacteria, viruses like in, like uh, the uh, flu virus, tissue repair, like when we cut ourselves, foreign bodies, and basically the mechanism is triggering phagocytosis and cell killing. The cell that is either uh, needs it to be repaired or has the virus or the bacteria. The interleukin-4 triggering the Th2 response with a very characteristic cytokine profile that stimulates basically the eosinophil. So the key target cell in the Th2 is the uh, eosinophil. That's the best way our bodies can deal with allergens. And the way or the mechanism by which it works is a topic mechanism using IgE and antibody-mediated mechanisms for cell destruction. And finally, we have the Th17s, which will act upon the neutrophil and the associated response is dealing with danger that is from candida, other fungal infections, and several other bacteria. And the main mechanism that is producing is also phagocytosis and inflammation. To create these slides, I used several uh, references. Bear in mind that I'm taping this in 2019. This is a very active field of research and uh, don't hesitate to look for more references and other YouTube channel videos, including the ones in my channel. Thank you very much. I hope this was useful.